Greetings and hallelujah to everyone listening in today. I hope you guys all had a wonderful week. Let us all start with the meditation of the week from Psalms 91. I'll go ahead and start. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God and Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This week's message, uh, the title is A Warning of judgment and hell to the members of the deep state, which includes the the Rothschild family, the Vatican and the Pope, the Jesuits, um, WCC, World World Council of Churches, WEA, World Evangelical Alliance, and NCCK, National Council of churches in Korea and all the pastors in the congregation who are within the membership. Today's message is from Hebrews chapter 3, one verse, the first verse. Hebrews 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, Partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Once again, Hebrews 3 verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Apostle Paul said to the holy brothers who participate in the heavenly calling, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. Jesus, who called the twelve apostles to preach the gospel on his behalf, is the only apostle and high priest. No one under the heaven can claim to be the apostle and high priest. If anyone, per- if any person claims that he is the apostle and high priest, he must prove that he is the God who created the heavens and the earth and died for the sins of the world and resurrect once again. However, over the past 2,000 years, 
there has been one person or actually many persons over the years who claims that he is the apostle the high priest and holy heavenly father while he still blasphemes the name of God he still deceives that he is ruling the present world on behalf of Christ Jesus this is the Pope who rules the whole world from his Roman Vatican sanctuary the resurrected Christ Jesus appeared to Apostle John and gave a warning in advance about the appearance of a self-proclaimed apostle he said this in Revelation chapter 2 verse 1 through 3 unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast patience and for my name's sake hast labored and has not fainted the Lord Jesus also showed Apostle John that the Pope who calls himself the Apostle the self-proclaimed Apostle would eventually be burned with fire unto judgment in the Great Tribulation who became a whore with the Antichrist reigning in the city of Babylon the Great his testimony in Revelation 18 verses 18 through 20 and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. In the case of the United States, back in 1871, United States won the Civil War, but the Vatican and the Jesuits realizing that their national finances were completely bankrupt created the deep state also known as the cabal with its Rothschild making the United States Federal Reserve Bank as their own bank for 150 years having paper money the dollar bills printed indefinitely it has put America Corporation back in debt these deep state forces are plotting to enslave the people of the world after putting the United States along with other countries around the world into their own hands after moving Christians to heaven through the through the day of Christ that's when the rapture will happen God will give the Jews and Gentiles who do not believe in Christ Jesus the one last chance to repent by allowing the rule of the Antichrist appearing out of the deep state to rule the whole world for the following seven years but in order to judge the unrepented nations to the end Christ Jesus will appear to the world to judge the head of deep state the Antichrist it is written as the beast in the Bible and the false prophet who helped him the Pope by throwing them into the lake of fire 
This is written in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. The deep state forces formed WCC, once again this is World Council of Churches, the WEA, World Evangelical Alliance, and the NCCK, the National Council of Churches of Korea, along with Roman Catholicism, to join in the apostasy that denied Jesus, the only Christ, the only Savior. Roman Catholicism also united all religions, allowing even apostate churches to join their conspiracy. Today, the pastors of the end times are all almost apostates, just like the pastors in Israel, including the Korean churches. In addition, apostate pastors are persecuting true shepherds, the true pastors who believe in Jesus Christ, the only Christ, and who hope and testify for the appearing of Christ while keeping their purity. The appearing of Christ is the day of rapture, day of Christ. First, in first sequence. Also, carnal and religious Christians who follow these apostate pastors mock and persecute the true Christians. In the Bible, we can discern from the words of the prophet Isaiah's testimony against apostate Israeli shepherds. This is written in Isaiah 56, verses 9 through 12. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. Kind of sounds like someone with drinking problem, who may seem wholly up front, may seem wholly up front on TV, or maybe on recordings, but always preaching the gospel's prosperity never mentioning the Millennium Kingdom of Christ. Jesus, the only Christ, spoke of the true servant who awakened, who was awakened and preached the seasonal word of God before the Great Tribulation came. Matthew 24 verses 42 to 51 Watch, therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season?
blessed is he blessed is that servant whom his lord when he cometh shall find so doing verily i say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods but and if that evil servant shall say in his heart my lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to smite his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunken the lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him and in an hour that he is not aware of and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth smiting his fellow servants mocking and smiting his fellow Christians who preach the truth of Lord Jesus Christ and the day of rapture who mocks these fellow Christians who yell and who cry out and preach to stay awake and watch for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he's going to meet us in the air when he sounds the trumpet when he calls and sounds like the trumpet come up hither if you don't hear that you are being left behind you say you are a Christian and you do not hear that you're gonna be here and you're not gonna know where those friends of yours could be your husband could be your wife could be your son or daughter your cousin could be your fellow co-worker could be your teacher could be your student could be your doctor, could be your nurse, could be your artist, could be your driver, anybody that you may or may not know. That has to be the worst feeling if you're left behind. So be ready. Please be ready. In the last verse, um there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth this is because you're in hell you'll be gnashing your teeth because it's so hot and you're crying probably yelling out i've i should have i could have i would have it's too late then christ jesus through apostle john gave the word of warning saying that the Roman Catholics of the end times belong to the deep state. And ministers of these churches united with them through the WCC, WEA, and the NCCK, and all of their members joining their apostasy in unity with them. He said this in Revelations chapter 18, verse 1 through 5. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, 
for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. The Lord Jesus also made it clear the identity of Babylon the Great. This is the whore, the harlot who left Christ. Testimony is written in Revelation 17, verses 15 through 18. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, unto, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Jesus himself said that God so loved this world so much that God gave his only begotten son as a sacrifice. He made him bleed. He made him take all of our sins and die on the cross for me, for you. So God wants no one to be put in traps but to flee from what the Vatican has laid over the last 2,000 years which was to send people to hell this is the time for the priests and members of Catholic Church to hear this warning and make a decision also pastors and members of the denominations belonging to WCC, WEA, and also the NCUCK, please understand that if you do not come out of them right now, you cannot escape the judgment of hell. You might be thinking to yourself right now, Oh, I have believed in Jesus all my life. I have served in the church all my life. Or, I have been a servant of Lord Jesus and have endured all sorts of hardships as the minister of God. You're probably thinking to yourself right now, how dare you say of me going to hell? Well, Apostle Paul witnessed this clearly. Think deeply about Christ Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest. Jesus alone is the Christ, the Savior who died and rose again for our sins. To believe in Jesus Christ is to believe in the only Christ, the Christ. All other sins can be forgiven and be cleansed if you repent and confess the sins. However, the World Council of Church Members, WEA, the World Evangelical Alliance, and NCCK, the, uh, the National Council of Churches in Korea, claim that Jesus is not the only Christ. And also they preach that there are other ways to salvation through other religions. They are committing a huge blasphemy. Therefore, this sin alone is the only sin that loses the salvation because this is the only sin that cannot be forgiven proclaiming and teaching that there are other methods of salvation other than Jesus Christ. Apostle John testified of this in 1 John 
chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also, that is begotten of him. I dare to urge you with love, dear pastors, if your denomination belongs to WCC, once again, this is World Council of Churches, WEA, World Evangelical Alliance, or NCCK, the National Council of Churches in Korea, please come out of it immediately. Also, those members who belong to the churches to such denominations should leave immediately if the pastors refuse to leave these organizations. This is directly from the WCC homepage. WCC member churches can be found in all regions of the world and include most of the world's Orthodox churches, Eastern and Oriental, as well as African instituted, Anglican, Assyrian, Baptist, Evangelical, Lutheran, Mennonite, Methodist, Moravian, Old Catholic, Pentecostal, Reformed, United slash Uniting and Free Independent Churches, Disciples of Christ and Friends, the Quakers. Finally, we must meditate deeply on what Apostle Paul's Confession of Faith to Pastor Timothy before he went home up in heaven. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith of the only Christ Jesus. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing, which is the day of Christ. One last thing for those of you who do not know or may be confused about the day of Christ. There's a book by Clarence Larkin written almost oh, over 100 years ago. It has nice graphic charts to help you understand if you're more inclined to study with visuals. This book that I'm mentioning right now is called, it's titled The Greatest Book on Dispensational Truth in the World by Clarence Larkin. This is a great study guide along with the Bible, the King James Bible, because this tells you and teaches you different dispensations of our times and how the times are closing in in the end times, which we are living in today, which is the age of grace. The great tribulation is just around the corner. This also explains the difference between amillennialism, saying this is teaching of some denominations, such as Catholics and Presbyterians. They're saying Jesus Christ isn't coming. That's a false doctrine. If you're believing in that, if you're going to that church, this is what I mentioned earlier, you need to get out of it. The Bible clearly states he is coming back. So that is wrong. Now, I'm not going to go into details about different styles. I'll break it down to the, um, the bigger groups. There's also post-millennial um, doctrine. That is also wrong. That is saying the rapture is after the Great Tribulation. No. 
That means you're going through literally hell on earth and then you're going to get raptured. That is also wrong. What the teachings to the King James Bible and what Apostle Paul is preaching and also Apostle John in Revelation is teaching is this, that this is premillennial, okay? In order, the end of, the, end of uh, the age of grace, which is the time that we're living in now, will come to an end when the rapture happens. Then the son of perdition, the Antichrist, will appear. And then the clock for seven years of great tribulation will start to run which is designed for the Jews all this time who have not believed in the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. Even to this day, they do not believe that Jesus Christ was their Messiah. In Hebrew word, that's Christ. Messiah in Hebrews and then in um, the, the Greek word would be Christ, Christos. The anointed one. I had a chance to, um, I mentioned this in other recordings. I'm one of the higher bosses in my old job here in downtown LA. I preached to this uh, Jewish gentleman. To this day, he still thinks Jesus Christ is just a Jewish man. Isaiah called it out. You know, if you read Isaiah, God told him to uh, make him blind and deaf so that they won't know what the prophecy is. And through the experience of preaching to this gentleman, having conversation with this gentleman, the Bible is true. He has no idea and he won't believe him. You know, traditions won't save you. Church or religious tra uh, traditions will not save you. Your denomination won't definitely save you. Self-righteousness? It's not enough. It's not good. It's nothing. And your knowledge won't save you from going to hell. Only by believing in this gospel, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first four verses, will save you. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Also, salvation is a gift from God. It's not something that you can buy or you can work for. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Now that you've heard the gospel of Christ from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, you must confess and believe. You have to believe in your heart the gospel. Romans 10. Verse 9 and 10, it says this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Skip down to verse 13. Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Who is your Lord? The correct answer is Jesus Christ. Him only. Nobody else. Not other religion. Only Jesus Christ died and resurrected. No other God has done that. So no other God 
has this amount of power. Will you receive him today? You need to invite Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. We'll do the sinner's prayer together. I'll go ahead and start, but this is for you. You can follow along and then pause and repeat if you have to. So here we go. Lord, I am a sinner. I know that I shall be judged and will be sent to hell because of my sins. However, I believe in Jesus Christ who was judged and died on the cross instead of me. Now I open my heart to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior forever. Please lead me in your way so that I may serve you. Thank you for cleansing of my sins by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for saving me from the destruction of hell. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus, name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and also directing us through your word today. Directing us to the right path to avoid your wrath and judgment of hell. I have testified best as I could by the gu guidance of your Holy Spirit. I pray that may only your word of truth be remembered in the hearts of the dear listeners. May your grace and truth grow abundantly within the hearts of the dear listeners in these end times. Please help them and please guide them through your Holy Spirit so that the young men and women who hear this message can have discernment all while living in the evil days of our current world. Lord, bless them and sanctify your words in them forevermore. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen.